You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're trying to look at the success rate of small businesses in the Nigerian uh, environment. And we're glad to be joined by Dr. Femi Egbeshola, National President, Association of Small Business Owners of Nigeria. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning and thank you for having me. Okay, let's just begin with seeing the... Um, business environment, the Nigerian business environment, through your own eyes, how would you describe it? Well, um, the current business environment is very, very harsh. It's the harshest in our history. It's very tough for business owners, mm. particularly those that falls in the category of nano, micro, small, and medium businesses. Mm. Uh, quite a number of businesses have folded up and according to Smidan, that is Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, in the last uh, two years, over two million businesses have a closed shop. And that's an indication that things are not right with business environments. And um, uh, we also discover in our own association that over 20% of our members have also a uh, closed shop. And that's not good news. Okay, uh, what are some of these things that are making the business environment as harsh as you're putting it? Uh, well, to start with, uh, inflation is at the highest peak. Uh, we, the inflation we have in the country at the moment is what we have never experienced before. And that has reduced the purchasing power of the consumers. So the consumers can no longer afford to buy at the quantity of the kind of particular product or a service they need as they would they should do and that has reduced cash flow for businesses the energy cost is another thing in the last two years or so we have experienced about 300 percent increase in energy costs uh, taxes also have gone up new taxes were introduced and the, the existing taxes were even jacked up we have issues of multiple taxation here and there there is no access again to finance for those who belong, who belong to this category of micro and small businesses. Um, before now, it was even a bit easier to access cash, but now it's very difficult to access loan. And that's the model. That's one of the reasons is because um, the interest rate is at the highest head. At the moment now, banks give out um, interest uh, loan at interest rate of 26 to 30 percent. And when you decide to go to other uh, financial institutions like the microfinance bank or fintech, you get as high as 60 to 80% interest rate per annum. What kind of business will you do with that? Forex is also unavailable. Quite a number of our raw materials that we use for our businesses are being imported from overseas. Forex is not available, so you have to go to the parallel market, and the parallel market is offering you a price that is uh, anti-business. And with that, it is in almost impossible for you to do business. Uh, someone doing a business with a cash flow of uh, 100 million the last two years will have that particular fund doing a business of 20, 30 million this year because of uh, uh, the rate of which we have forex released to us in the parallel markets. We also have infrastructure issues, uh, quite uh, a, a, a number of our infrastructure are in, uh, in decay, are in deficit, are in decay. Many of the roads are bad. If you look at uh, today, quite a number of farmers cannot transport their, their produce to the, to, the, to the city because the, 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 the vehicles cannot even go to the interland to move those produce to the city. Uh, and the, the energy cost is there it's, and it's continued uh, on, on the rise. We have the issue of telecommunication, too, as one of the infrastructure, infrastructure deficits we have. Telecommunication in the sense that uh, we have so many uh, interlands that do not have access to Internet, where they can use, use data and Internet to do their, their, their business. For example, talking about the cashless policy, for you to be able to transact uh, cashless, you need the uh, Internet to be able to do your business. Some of these areas do not have uh, Internet facility as we speak. And then um, the, 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 the issue is on and on, and I can continue to talk about that. Okay, uh, well, uh, a layman would say that when there is inflation, it's the people that suffer, not really the businessmen, because they just dump whatever they are suffering 
uh, on the people. So you buy things costly and then you add the price people get to buy. The final consumer is the one who really suffers it. But if um, your association of small business owners is crying, uh, every other association is crying, manufacturers and all that, they are all crying, help us understand how it affects the, the manufacturer, how it affects the business owner, even when we think that is the final consumer that bears the brunt or yeah, feels the pain? Well, um, as we speak today, the majority of our population are those that are employed and uh, those, that is, those that are collecting salaries at the end of the month. Mm. We have not seen salary increase for the past few years. And um, if a salary, if a salary earner is getting, say, 50,000 naira per month, so to speak, and um, he can afford to buy certain products before. Now that inflation has come up, and um, a particular product is buying for 2,000 naira, and he used to buy, say, 10, maybe one of his groceries, say, 10 in a month for his family, and that particular product goes to a price of as high as now 8,000, and his salary has not increased. What it means is that instead of buying 10, he would end up buying maybe 3 or 4. If you end up buying three or four, it means that the producer or the manufacturer of that particular product will sell less quantity than what each used to sell. And that implies that his profit margin will also reduce because he can no longer make enough sales as he used to do before. Eventually, when his profit margin reduces, he will not be able to function successfully as a business. He may have to reduce his staff strength. He may have to close down some of his equipment or machineries. And at the end of the day, if case not taken, it may go bankrupt. Eventually, you discover that it is the business that suffers it because businesses are made to make profits. And when the consumers do not have the financial power to buy, there's nothing you can do. Business is complete when you produce and you, at the end of the day, sell what to produce and get funds for it. That's the way it affects us in the business environment. And the factors I have ruled out earlier all comes down to business owners because um, uh, the consumer may have definitely some alternatives, but the business owner do not have any alternative. If I'm producing, uh, for example, I'm producing butter now and nobody is taking my butter, there's nothing I can do. But someone in their household may decide not to take butter and use some alternatives to eat his bread if he chooses to. And then um, that's not possible for a business owner, except he or she needs to diversify to other businesses, which will also need a lot of capital and other capacities to be built around that business he wants to go to. So by, by and large, the, the, the responsibility and the negative effect is more on uh, the business owners. And that's why you can also see that um, statistics is showing that businesses are dying day by day because of the harsh economic environment. Mm. Okay, um, you mentioned some of these things, and we discussed them before uh, this segment where we have you. Uh, uh, the same things that were ma uh, mentioned by Nasima are the ones you mentioned. Multiple taxation, power, infrastructure, forex, diesel, uh, and you may name it. Uh, but let's take taxation, for instance. Um, government must collect tax. How do you want it collected? Uh, do you want it scrapped or do you, do you want it collected in a different way? Describe to us what you feel government should do for you to be comfortable still doing business in Nigeria. Government all over the world depends on taxes to survive. Mm. So we are always in support of taxes. We in the business community pay tax and we are happy paying tax. What we are not happy about is one, multiple taxation, whereby you pay tax, a particular tax to the federal government, you see the state government coming up with something similar, you see the local government coming up with also something similar. So you pay several taxes. It will interest you to note that some of the trucks you see on the road has about uh, over 100 different taxes that are paying to be on the road. You can imagine that that's crazy in an environment where you want business to try. It's, uh, it's anti-business. Um, talking about taxes, we are expecting government to, instead of raising taxes, to increase uh, those that will come to the tax next. We have still very few of business owners paying taxes now. Government can generate more revenue by making sure that they expand the tax next. One way they can expand the tax net also 
is by uh, uh, collaborating more with business stakeholders. For example, in our own association, in our own business community, uh, we can assist governments to help them get taxes from our members instead of them going directly to businesses on the streets. Uh, by doing that, uh, we'll be able to save uh, the tax uh, go, uh, the tax office a lot of uh, a fund in terms of logistics that they will use to pursue that, and they'll be able to get also more taxes. And when the, 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 the community is also seeing what government is doing, the taxes they've collected over time, you will discover that they will be happier paying those taxes. Today, many of us are challenged with the fact that we do not really see the effect of the enormous taxes the few of us are paying. And that means that um, it becomes discouraging for some of us to begin to pay tax. And then um, some of these taxes are even beyond our, our profits. You are expected to pay tax from whatever profits you make. But there are some taxes that are already statutory that you just must pay. Whether you are in business and are making enough, enough money or not, we expect governments to also apply more of technology in their way of collecting taxes and managing tax issues. And then um, if this is done, we discover that um, government will be able to get more taxes and the taxpayers will be more relieved and more encouraged to pay tax at the end of the exercise. Oh, well, you just mentioned that you could collect direct taxes from the association members and all that. Uh, how do you think that... Uh, uh, so many Nigerians will not run away from being part of the association uh, in, in the first place. Um, just tell us the advantages of belonging to your association, for instance, that you think that if this is one of the measures, you will still have members that are ready to be there. Because someone who doesn't want to pay tax must find something really, really interesting to belong to your association, uh, to come in there when he knows that he probably is going to pay the tax that he didn't want to pay. So what are these advantages, by the way? Let's start from the tax issue. Uh, so there are some taxes that are statutory. There's nothing anybody can do about it. You cannot run away from paying it. Mm. So if you belong to an organized body like ours, and then we have an agreement with government to collect tax on their behalf, we'll be able to give certain rebates. For example, if a particular tax that you're supposed to pay, maybe consumer tax, is expected that you pay 10,000 lira per annum, for example, if government has to come to your doors, we can negotiate with government and say, okay, you don't need to engage staff to be going around the streets collecting these taxes. We'll be able to collect it on your behalf. But for the fact that we're also doing this service for you, let our members pay a rebate of about 6,000 instead of 10,000. That will leave the business owner, and that saves that business owner some form that he can use to engage in his business for other activities. That's one way I, I, you, you have advantage being part of a, uh, an association like ours. The, 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 the benefit of belonging to an association is enormous. Governments also deal directly with associations rather than people on the streets, and that's how it should be, and that is how it is in other climes. So when you have opportunities coming from government, you expect that you are going to get those opportunities directly from organized private sector association instead of uh, the individual businesses on the streets. And that's why you see quite a number of uh, business owners now are uh, literate enough to understand that this is the time for them to join associations. You see association already growing with membership now. For example, in our association, it, the membership is free. You don't even need to pay to join us. It is totally free to join our association. And then um, for this, we have quite a number of uh, uh, Nigerian business owners trooping in to belong to our association. We have over 50,000 members at the moment, and we are rendering to them business services that help them to build their capacity in business, give them further access to finance, access to markets, help them to be able to, to, to influence government policies in a way that will positively affect our businesses, help them to be able to connect with the international community, whereby they'll be able to now sell their product or services to the international community in a seamless way and on and on like that oh okay uh that's that's good um well the business community generally it's like you said first when we started is not very clement um if you were to uh, advise the present administration on things to do, not just uh, the taxation, power, infrastructure. Are there more things that need to be put in place, policies, uh, specific policies that are lacking right now that are making the environment very hostile and harsh, as you said? 
Yes, um, if I have my way, I would first of all um, want government to pay critical attention to the MSME sector now more than ever before. We all have identified that it's, it is the engine of growth of the economy. We offer the highest number of employment in the country. We contribute as much as 50% to the GDP. So it is a sector that can never be neglected if we want to grow our economy. So government should pay more than the usual attention to that sector. And one of the ways they can do that is by engaging the stakeholders in their policy making. Most often than not, the problem we have is that there are always uh, policy mismatch or policy somersaults because the policy does not really relate to what is on the streets, to the reality of the day. And this is because when policies are made, government sits in their office to make policies without involving the stakeholders. We want government this time around to begin to see how they can involve us from the incubation stage, not at the implementation stage. And when the policies are also made, there should be a, an evaluation and monitoring uh, team that will look at how the policy is doing on the streets. Is it having the expected result? It could there be certain changes or modalities added to it over time? These are some of the things that needed to be done. We also discovered that some of the policies we have in the, in the country that has to do with businesses, particularly small businesses, are imported from other clients where their nature and culture does not tally with ours. And for that reason, there are issues. It does not meet its targeted results. So these are some of the areas we need to, uh, to look at. Government also must see need to make sure that access to finance is an important issue they need to address. Access to finance is very, very important. Many of the reasons why small businesses are folding up is because of liquidity problem. There's no businesses now that can go to the bank to collect loan and operate with interest rate as high as 30%, 60%, 80% per annum. It's not possible. So government needs to intervene and make it possible. We have some more countries whereby if you are categorized as micro or small business, the way you are being treated is different from a regular large business. You are giving the loan at single digit interest rates that helps you grow your business to a point, we call it incubation period, until you can now begin to say, okay, I have migrated from my small business to a medium or large business and cannot begin to do business in the formal way with the banks. These are some of the things we are expecting the government of the day to look at, especially now that they are coming to power. We also expect that the government of the day should see need to tackle the issue of this energy. Energy is important in business. While they, they, we all accept that, yes, uh, a subsidy needs to be removed, but we also see it must fix electricity so that it will cushion the effect the subsidy may have on businesses. If electricity is available, quite a number of small businesses or micro businesses will also continue to spring up and the existing one will be able to survive. Many small businesses depend solely on energy for them to operate. Even as micro businesses as uh, Babin and the rest of it, they depend solely on energy. So energy needs to be fixed as urgent as possible so that businesses can survive. We also need a lot of capacity building that government needs to come in and see how they can build the capacity of business owners the more. Managerial issues is one of the reasons why businesses are collapsing. And it is because uh, many of the business owners these days are not uh, trained to start a business. Rather, they start businesses out of necessity. And we should have a particular place where to train them. In our association, we, have to, we offer capacity building. But what we are doing is like a drop in the ocean. It is government responsibility to be able to build the business environment for it to be stable and grow so that many others will be encouraged to come into business. You now discover that many of businesses or many Nigerians will no longer be interested in running away from Nigeria to other countries because they can start a business, sustain the business, and grow the business. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Femi Egbeshola, National President, Association of Small Business Owners of Nigeria, for letting us see the business climate of Nigeria through the eyes of a business owner. We thank you so much for your time on the show this morning. Thank you very much once again. Okay, this is where we draw the curtain on uh, today's uh, program, The Breakfast, and we do hope that you'll join us again tomorrow for another edition. Whoever is in charge of uh, whatever we've been talking about today, uh, we hope that you are listening and you will do the needful. 
stop comparing us to other countries. Uh, Ghana, for instance, you don't need uh, to buy fuel for your office, buy fuel for your car, and buy fuel for your house. That is what Nigerians are doing. So if they're buying fuel, a liter for a thousand naira, you know that you're only buying it for your car. So comparison sometimes is a, a mark of... Uh, uh, a lot of people will call it laziness. So we are unique. Nigerians are unique. The situation in Nigeria is unique. So if there is something that can be done by the government to alleviate the sufferings of the people, let it just be done. Because what we saw on the internet uh, was uh, a lot of uh, things comparing the sale of petrol in other countries to that of Nigeria. To just say that in Nigeria is still cheap if it's sold at 500 naira per liter. You didn't show us the minimum wage in those countries. You didn't show us uh, the power, the state of power in those countries and all that. So you should, lead us to stop doing these things. Just treat us, give us what we need by, because we need them. Not because we are like another country or anything. We are just Nigeria. And if we are Nigeria, treat us as Nigerians and find solutions to our problems in Nigeria and not tell us how it is done everywhere else. Because when the citizens begin to compare the government to the governments of other nations, it will not be fair. So let's just be balanced. Know that we are in Nigeria and let our problems be solved uh, as Nigerians and for Nigerians. But before we leave you, remember the words of uh, Winston Churchill, which is Winston Churchill said, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. That's how it's going to be on the show this morning. My name is Nyam Gul Akkaji. Let's do it again tomorrow.